I need someone to introduce my video this week. Can you do it for me? Plus. Well, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Yes, perfect. But also, I'm going to add in, please comment anything, emoji, anything. Thumbs up, because apparently that is the favorite of the YouTube algorithm. And the more you comment, the more other, uh, other people will get to see this video. So, comment. Looks like the IV is coming out. It looks like they're adding cribbing underneath. And I'm not sure for what. Maybe to slide it? I'm guessing that's what they're going to do is slide the I beam across both of those, um, the cribbing? I don't know, but I guess we'll see. Yeah, that does look like what they're going to do because now I can see they have like a little more rod that they're going to use to roll the I-beam out with. It's going to be an interesting process. I know that's how they got it in there, but it's been a while. Lord, protect these men. Protect the house. Richard's in his rig. Kaya's hooking it up. Just like that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> yes. And there is the building without the I-beam. It's been months, but it's out. Awesome job, guys. What it's like in Lempster, you know? You just like live in your life, and then one minute someone knocks at the door, and then you go to your door, and then you think it's a trick-or-treater, but it's no trick, but it's definitely a treat. So let me show you what was at my door here just a minute ago. It's Robin, my neighbor. And you want to get you in the ditch, so you... Yeah, but how do you avoid, how do you avoid, as you're going down, how do you avoid this moving, you know, at all? So that it's Well, they're in conversation, straight. but she <laughs> made me a gorgeous <laughs> quilt. <laughs> that is a reproduction 1800s uh, sawtooth quilt, <laughs> even with material that are so reproductions from the 1800s. Um, she made it for us here small, at the end. See, like, I'll right show it to you in a minute. So this is what Robin did. She's an amazing quilter and she just showed up at my door with this gorgeous quilt and I just about cried because it's just so stunning and beautiful and it's really a beautiful, beautiful, thoughtful gift. What a labor of love. Yeah, and I mean, I was telling Robin that it's perfect size for my side of the bed. But it's absolutely stunning and I love it. And thank you so much, Robin. You're welcome. Wow. It was fun. I, I run out of people to give things to. So. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll accept thing. it. That is stunning. I love it so much. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for wishing me a happy birthday. And uh, I would like to announce who is going to get the Lemster in t-shirt. Um, I went through the happy birthday wishes and just randomly picked one. It's gonna be Rick W. And 
please uh, just send your t-shirt size to renewedcolonial at gmail.com. Yeah, and, and address and so address. that we can ship it out to you. So, so we can ship it to you. So yes, congratulations to Rick W. And thanks again for uh, everybody that wished me happy birthday. And in case you're wondering, I'm not shy, I'm 46. Yeah, there you go. All right. Bye. We're going out to the hive. This is the day. Mike is going to be putting the the hive that's missing the queen on top of a existing an existing hive that has a queen. And in order for them to accept the colony, there's going to have to be a newspaper put in between so that they can't get in between but that they can smell the other queen, the pheromones and get used to them. And then um they will just join that colony. So that's what's going to happen. So once Micah has this hive um, settled in, you might have to wrap it again, right? But that probably won't be a today thing. Hmm? Wrapping it with tar paper? No, well, maybe. Not well, today though. No, because it's Micah's birthday and we have people coming and I have a special birthday dinner. I made two chicken pot pies. I made the mashed potatoes like he wanted and a special Hershey's chocolate cake with vanilla ice cream waiting for Micah when this is all done. Looks like a lot less on the top this time because all the sugar seems to be gone. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so do you know what hive you're gonna add them to, honey? I was thinking that one because it has a honey super on it. Okay, this one right there. So it would be able to, um... oh, wonderful. Shirley's over there rolling in something, lovely. I'm not giving her a bath tonight. We'll just let her sleep, sleep in the barn. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. They're all on the sugar here. I thought they weren't going to help themselves to that unless they needed it. Well, the tricky part here is going to be the paper is on the, the frame. So... Hopefully it doesn't make a huge mess. Unless I can just take this whole box off and put them. I don't see why I can't put it on there. Yeah, why not? So are you saying you're going to put the paper on top of the sugar? I don't think I need to anymore. Well, no, you're supposed to put the paper like right here. Yeah. Clean them. So would the paper hang out of the box? Yeah, it's not a problem. What if it got wet? Then it would just get wet. But it would make the whole paper wet? Yeah. On the inside? I think so. On the inside, yeah. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you rolling in? What is that? I don't see anything. Let me look at you. You look a little grubby. A little bit of, looks like hay in your hair and leaves. All right. Whatever. Look at the view from back here. Isn't that beautiful? We're right at the like kind of golden hour light. So only one piece of newspaper, that's it? Yep. Is that what they said? Yep, that's what they said. Okay, babe, then you know what you're doing. They Micah knows what he's doing. That. So are you going to put more sugar on the top with uh, where there was sugar before? It's a big pile of bees. You might just want to... Just... I don't have a little bee brush. You better watch yourself. Okay, I'll back up. <laughs> So we won't really know whether this worked. We're gonna have to, basically in the spring, we're gonna try to have to, we're gonna split this hive again. We're right. gonna have to get a new queen or if they hatch one, we'll put one over there and we'll start over again.
Again, he's putting the sugar on to um, help them through the winter and also it'll absorb moisture. So instead of them, you know, the uh, moisture getting in the hive and causing them to possibly freeze, it'll um, absorb into the sugar. And I see a lot of bees around me. I'm going to back up. Whatever we're doing here can't be worse than leaving the hive without a queen. Right. No, this is our only hope at this point. So we'll see when the spring comes. Yep. Lord willing, they'll yeah, live through it, the winter. If the hive is still thriving in the spring, then I'm going to talk to Tyler about splitting it early so that we can give them a chance, both a chance to really flourish again. Yeah. So right now you got to put the cover on and we're done for tonight? Yeah. All right. These are everywhere. I gotta back up or they're gonna bite me. Makaya and I were just in the um, old dining hall area because of a, I wanted to check the level in here and stuff. And yeah, a lot of work. But anyway, I was just happened to be looking at this old window seat and I noticed in the corner here, there's a little something something. It looks like a piece of paper and I wanna pull that out and see what it is. What is this? You figure there was probably a hole there, a mouse hole, and they wanted to close it up. So let's see. Let's look at it. So maybe we can find a year on it. Probably. It's hard for me to do it with one hand, though. Let me see if Michael will come help me. All right, Michael wants me to uh, hurry up with this because I'm it's ruining his like mojo. 1992 or something. Dear, really? You think that's from 1992? Somebody came in here and stuffed it in the hole to stop a draft. From 1992? Well, we'll find out when they did it. My guess is probably the 1920s. Right. This room has been closed up since the 1920s. It was not used. 1940s. I'm guessing 20s. No, no, the 30s. Funny. <laughs> Any dates, anywhere. The top part of it's gone, so. Yeah, but something in there might say something about somewhere, something. I mean, we're looking at 27 cents for some coffee, a pound of coffee, Gerber cereal. You're probably, this is probably. Ritz. Ritz, a box of Ritz chocolates, 29 cents a box. I'm guessing this is probably from the 1920s. Good boy. I mean, this is talking about ordering coal and Coke, the largest dealer of Lay, Coal and Claremont. I don't recognize that name of the store. And I mean, when was the last time you bought coal? I can't really find a date, but I guess the only way to really know is to find out when Ritz had chocolates that were 29 cents a box and when a pound of coffee was 27 cents. Gerber baby foods, three cans for 20 cents. I'm still saying probably the 1920s. I'll go look. Okay, I had to go in and get my phone because Mike and I decided to do a little bit of metal detecting in that same spot that I found that 1700s coin because we thought, you know what? The ground is open, nothing has frozen yet. And there is a spot, usually, you know, if you drop a, cho if you drop a coin, sometimes you might drop more than one. Whether, you know, something fell out of your pants, you dropped it, whatever. So we thought, well, let's look again in this spot because you never know. And sure enough, within a minute of detecting, Micah found another coin. We don't know what it is, we can't tell, we don't know how old it is. But um, I brought out a little damp cloth so that he can try to see. But we're pretty excited because there's another coin that we literally found in the same spot with the 1700s coin. Oh, uh, yeah, it's cool. Just wipe off we don't want to wipe it too bit. much. It's just they're so dirty, you can't. 
You don't want to scrub it. Okay, it is a one cent. So I think it's an India ad, maybe. Can I come and look? Yeah. See, you can see it says one cent. Yep. But you can't see what the front is. You think it's an Indian head? It's definitely an Indian head penny. I'm not sure what the date is. Okay, you want to turn it over? Wait, it's wait, wait, copper. Wait. It's a copper because there's green there, Michael. Yeah. Is that an Indian I'm head? I'm seeing 18. You're seeing an 1800? Yeah. Want to turn right it here. over? Let me just uh, wipe that off just a little bit. Can I see your phone for a second? Yep. It probably fell out of the same pocket. It's like the same 1887, person. I think. Oh, really? That's 100 years later. Hmm. That's pretty interesting. I guess we'll yeah. have to we'll look more later. So here's a view of the wall and the foundation without the cribbing and without the I-beam. So you get a really good idea what's going on over here. But we'll come over on this side because Makai is packing up some of the cribbing so we can kind of uh, get a low down or rundown, I guess, of what's going on here now. Hi, babe. Hey. So you're putting away the cribbing. You have removed the cribbing from the whole project. Now, why is the cribbing gone? You're not done here, so why is the cribbing being right. removed well we're the cribbing is obsolete now that we have posts on the uh, foundation and you won't need the cribbing anymore for any other part of uh inside trying to um level it or anything no because the purpose of the cribbing was to expose the center where the um, sill beam is so i could pour concrete underneath it now that the concrete's poured i have jacking points all the way around so I can just jack up off the uh, foundation. Okay, so now the cribbing's just obsolete. Right. So um, this cribbing actually goes to three different homes, right? Yeah, and I, I want to say right now, thank you very much for those that lent. I had three different people lend me um, cribbing. It saved me from having to buy like four foot lengths of six by sixes. Um, uh, Don and Laura up on Washington Heights and uh, um, Rainy Clark and uh, Richard, of course, helped me. But uh, yeah, I mean, even though it seems like a simple thing just to lend these timbers, um, it was a major part of the project that um, saved us time and money. And I am grateful and I feel that it's uh, really a participation by those people in this project. So thank like you. Like a community effort, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Now, didn't someone just stop by the yesterday saying that they had something? Yeah, um, somebody stopped by yesterday and said he had a couple of I-beams that he wasn't using and said I was welcome to him and I said yes please. Because that will definitely come in handy for all underneath here, right? You never know. I, I You don't know when you're going to need them. It's just I can't pass them up because they're going to come in handy. I could use them for supports. I could use them for just what I did out here if I need to do it somewhere else or yep. on the, around the house. So now that the um, cribbing is going, you have the cement wall in. Um, you have shored up this area and straightened out this spot, but that doesn't mean everything is done. I mean, there's still more to come. One of the things that drove this project was the need for drainage. Um, after we had the stone wall built, Andrew said it was the, of the utmost importance to put drainage in there. And so I couldn't see just putting it in there and ignoring the massive problem we had out here. So I decided to do the whole project at once, get that over with. So um, now, what I need to do is uh, I'm, I spent a lot of the time yesterday kind of mapping out the floor upstairs. In the ballroom? And Richard in and I in, in the ballroom and the dining hall just to see, and outside, to see um, multiple examples of the same thing. We wanna, well, if we see something down here, I want to see it upstairs on both levels. Well, do you want to give uh, show the other side of the house to kind of show what you were talking about as far on as like side, what's going on? Yeah. Sure. All right, we're in the road, but if car comes, we'll just move. So just to give you a, a little bit of a picture of what I was doing yesterday, mapping out the, um, the jacking process, um, everything to the right of this doorway is somewhat level on the outside walls. And 
I check that by putting the level on the floor and on the, on the window sills. Um, so what I did was you can see to the left of the door, you can see it kind of dive down a little bit. And even by eye, I'm seeing a few inches anyway. Well, I was able to confirm that with a laser upstairs. I put the laser at the high, high point where it's level and I marked a couple of spots around upstairs and I just measured the level of the floor and it's kind of all over the place, but <clears throat> I got redundant measurements downstairs. So I know that when I correct that, it's going to correct both levels. Cool, honey. And um, while we're standing here, because we don't show this side of the house very often, but I just want to draw attention. This is the side where people would have entered the tavern. Look at this gorgeous door. I just have to show you. That and gorgeous this is man. where you found your <laughs> bling bling. Bling bling. Yeah. The, the other door into the tavern. Coins. Yes, this is where the coins were found because this was the entrance. We also found sleigh bell here. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot more to discover, and we will be doing that eventually. But anyway, just thought you should see the ballroom beautiful